Peace, y'all. It's uh, October 8th. A uh, little update. We're going to talk about uh, carburetors. We're going to talk about pipes. We're going to talk about some other things. As you can see, the motor's not on yet, but it is right here. Uh, before I put it on, I actually wanted to make sure that I had uh, a linkage to make this thing work. As I told you in that other video, you know, the way this thing turns, um, it wasn't wasn't functioning real well for the way we were doing things you know i mean as you can see um this is not your standard way of doing things right let me see if i can get this thing to function real quick hold this here right so go real slow no sticky so uh yeah everything's good it opens all the way up closes real good had to make this funky looking bracket here but the, what I didn't want to do was drill and tap into my intake. And although there's plenty of beef to do that, because if this carburetor doesn't work, I don't want to be reminded of that carburetor didn't work, <laughs> right? So um, we're, I, was, I mean, any other time, I'd have taken this thing back off and I'd have spray bombed it and everything and, and got it looking pretty and all that. But uh, that's the best I could do with, uh, with, with the available bosses that we had to get this thing going. The reason I got these other carbs just like it's sitting here is, um, and there is a, a designation to the color. The red is, they're all the same carburetor. They're all uh, the Key and CDK2, it's a watercraft carb, as it says here. Uh, watercraft race use only, right? This is a Sudco modified car, but actually had a little Sudco sticker on it when, when it came new. Um, this one here is the red one is a DG modified CDK2 carb. And this is going to be your stock standard. Nobody has modified it. It's right from the factory carburetor. Um, I, I would have imagined they'd just be plain plain aluminum you know cast aluminum i wouldn't imagine they'd paint them but they did uh, and and how, how do you know robert how do, how do we know uh the modified ones from the unmodified ones because the modified ones actually had a choke shaft in here and a choke butterfly you can see this one's been devconned or filled up i just put uh, uh bolts in mine and plugged it off with a uh, loctite loctited them down so they're there's it's pl they're plugged off I'm, I'm i'm a little freaked out about the uh the filler because I don't want the filler to get sucked in through the motor but this one here the choke shaft was never drilled it never had a choke shaft in it so this one was an uh, it's bone stocker unmodified this is the second carburetor rich bought this was the first one he bought this is the one Francis bought I mean, these are some manifolds over here for the Hondas um, and obviously the big long bolts the carburetor goes in between so we got uh, all this done motor mounts will go on motor will be on tomorrow We'll definitely have that thing running by the end of the weekend. Pipes. Uh, we got all the pipes lined up over here. This is the RVS pipe that we were running on the motor that we just took off the car. Um, this is the RVXX pipe, the stock standard pipe that goes with the, the motor that we just had modified. And this big fatty is the 175 pipe, the SSE uh, pipe. And it's not a stock standard um, IEMI pipe. This is made by SRS. It's made by uh, uh, SRS down in, in um, Texas. He, he developed a little longer head pipe, which he's, he claimed helped that, that pump carburetor to, uh, to run uh, at, lo at low revs, I guess, because the way they come, you get under 10 Gs. Uh, in a corner and it's just a dog it, it doesn't and, and everybody that ran the motors sprint racing blamed it on the carburetor and uh, the guy that um, at SRS that, that made the develop this pipe and made it said it wasn't the carburetor it was the pipe so um, a little longer maybe a little bit longer than what we're used to right and uh, we can always shorten this up um, if we want to get into that I don't think we're going to need to to tell you the truth I think what we're doing by throwing big carburetor on a motor that uh, was originally, before all the porting, was originally designed for the 30 millimeter carb. Uh, we're going with a bigger carb. We've got to have a bigger volume pipe. You can't just throw, but you can. I mean, you can do anything. But uh, to have everything talk together, you need a bigger volume pipe. This pipe, uh, the spec pipe um, from IAMI through, on, on the homologation sheet, uh, was a... a, a 
4,120, 4,120 cc's. So if you were to plug off one end and fill it up, I guess with a fluid, it would hold 41, 4,120. This pipe, the RVXX stock standard pipe is, is 4,010. So this is, you know, another 110 cc's more. Uh, it doesn't sound like a heck of a lot, but again, this one has also got the extra expansion length at the beginning here, which is going to help what the big carburetor hinders. The big carb is, it should, theoretically should cause, but I don't want to say hurt your bottom end, but, but cause uh, uh, a deficiency in the bottom end compared to the little carb. The little carb would be super responsive, you know? Um, but the big carb is going to give us more top end, more power, more speed, more, more air, more fuel. You know what I mean? And we need, we need the bigger pipe. So um, I'm going to go ahead and actually cut this pipe on some cones and get it to fit the cart. Um, as you can see what's going on here, we've got this bend, bend in this, this pipe here, RVXX pipe. looks a little funky, doesn't it? But um, it had to be done that way because the... The flange comes out on a downward angle. The exhaust goes down. On the RVS, uh, you see it's a either flat or it's actually uphill a little bit, right? Right? So that has a lot to do with how the pipe sits on the cart. And uh, although it looks funky, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as there's no sharp changes, um, that's a nice fluent flowing set up there we didn't uh, we didn't hurt that pipe at all so um you want it to be all you know gradual i mean we turned we turned the cones on this one and it turned out okay but uh it is what it is man um we'll go ahead and cut this in a couple different spots we'll get the motor on and stick this on and see what we got to do to get it to fit the cart but uh i took some measurements here the the fat part of the pipe is is bigger around then the fat part on this one and the fat part on this one. This one's a little bit bigger than this one. This one a little bit bigger than than the uh, the, the what I call the VL125, the very first homologation of, of Vortex, which we also have. It looks just like an RVS, which was homologation number two. Um, so uh, we already we already I already have a good idea uh, from the homologation sheets what's going on here. And uh, although I'm not a, a pipe expert and a porting expert, um, from trial and error and from use, from swapping pipe to pipe, you can, you can feel, you know, it may not be dyno time, but you can feel it. If you can feel it seated to pants, it's making a difference and it makes a difference on a stopwatch. So we'll, we'll get this pipe to fit. We're going to start with big pipe and big carb. We're not, we'll bring the small carb and intake with us uh, just as a backup in case this doesn't work. I mean, I mean, if we put this thing on and we get it started up on the stand and it just bog, gog, gog, blah, 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 it won't start, won't run, just isn't right, then, you know, off it'll come. If we start running around out at the track and, and it just won't run clean and we, we tune on it and we can't dial out whatever's wrong with it, if there's a problem with it, then off it comes. We'll go back to the 30. Um, I actually have rubber flanges, light, you know, kind of like this, but it's just got the two ears on it, right? It would look something like this, but made out of rubber with a rubber flange on it, right? And I've got a bunch of those in a cabinet over here. Um, we'll bolt one of those on to this intake, and then we'll start going with float bowl carbs. We won't be able to do that at the track, but we will be doing that over at Johnny's place in Chicago and uh, testing different carburetors along with the different pipes, different lengths of uh, stinger tube, which is uh, after the... The last cone, the length of that tube, very important. Um, I changed the shape of it, but didn't change the length of it. Uh, we have messed with the length of it, but, but without dyno testing, just seat of the pants testing. And I uh, didn't seem to really notice any RPM difference or any lap time difference or any out of the hole or down the straightaway difference. So whatever it is, it's very minor. And we, and we, we were really messing around with a quarter inch, eighth of an inch, half an inch, you know, a little different. So it wasn't that big a deal. But... Um, so this is Friday evening. Uh, we're going to cut her, shut her down early, hang out, get some uh, dinner with the wife, and hang out uh, because the weekend, we're going to be hitting it hard over the weekend and, and get this thing, a uh, whole bunch of this done. Uh, motor, plumbed, and all that stuff going. Uh, cable, hold down all that. Uh, we'll get some new brake pads in. We've got to get the, uh, 
the uh, uh, hubs and rotors off, you know, right? They, and, and balance both sets because I balance my stuff right on the, uh, the hubs. And you see, I, I mark the end of one of the studs on either side, the bolts, right? And then I'll index the wheel to that stud. And that way I'll know if, when I'm going to change tires, how to orientate the, the wheel to the, uh, to, to the hub and it'll already be balanced. But you have to balance your hub, rotor, wheel and tire all, all the way you're going to run it. It doesn't make sense. And I know people that do this. They leave their cart like this. They take a wheel and they just take a hub. They just take a, a wheel hub. I know I got one here somewhere. Uh, and they just put a, a, a regular uh, wheel, wheel hub on their wheel and tire and balance it and then take it off and put it on a wheel and hub that they're, they're going to run on their cart. And they, they balance it with a wheel and hub that they're not going to run. So that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Assuming this was perfectly balanced and the hub you're going to use was perfectly balanced, okay, but no, th th that's not what they're doing. So, um, again, do we take things to extremes? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I know a guy, I know a guy named Scott Fiesler that never balances front tires at all. I mean, I only balance the fronts because everything on the rear is so out of whack already. Um, there's so many things that you're not balancing. Balancing the tires really isn't going to make much difference. So, uh, but Scotty never balances fronts. He said, if you go fast enough, everything smooths out. So, uh, you know, old Fiesler, he was pretty quick. So, uh, you know, I, I, that doesn't work for me. Um, his, uh, uh, the drunker I get, the faster I go, the, you know, the next day, it didn't never work for me either. So whatever works for Scotty is all good. We're, uh, we're going to get her together uh, and, and get moving. And um, we'll bring you some more over the weekend. God bless. Godspeed. We're praying for you. Hang in there. It'll get better.